Hi guys, I am Isa, and today we're doing how to submit HTML form into your email. So first, we need to install PHP. The reason for that is because we're going to be using something called formsubmits.co. Actually, a website. So form submit dot co yeah the reason we need php is because you can't use the form submit dot co in you know if you just normally run a html file you need a cert you need a server on the html file Search. I'm just gonna search for PHP and click on this first one, PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. So it's gonna show all of these. You have to click on downloads. And since I'm using Windows, I'm just gonna click on this link because that's Windows downloads. I'm gonna show all of these ones. So if you're on 64 bit Windows, then download this one. If you're on 32 bit windows then download this one. So since I'm on 64 bit windows I'm going to do this one. And yeah, I'm going to download. So now that it's finished, we need something to extract it. So we're going to download 7 zip. I'll look on the first link. Mm -hmm, two of these. So I'm going to download the 64 bit version over here so you, you download it that goes to download as well so after downloading that I'm just gonna open the folder where the PHP is and if I click on PHP the PHP zip file then go to 7-zip and then I'm going to do Extract files. You have to choose where you want to extract it by pressing this dot 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 button. So it's going to be in a C drive and a new folder. What to name it? PHP. And click on and then click on OK. So there are a bunch of other settings, but we don't want to change any of those. So we're just gonna click on OK. And then it's gonna extract. So let's. So after it's finished extracting, we should go to where we extracted it to. So it's in my C drive and in this PHP folder. And then there's also this, which we don't want. So uh, we can just. Let's go and name this folder PHP. There. So now you have to set an environment variable because to set up our PHP server, we need to be using the command prompt. And the we won't be able to run the PHP command on the command prompt with that without the environment variables. So I'm going to go to my start menu and search for environment variables and do the one which has is it the system environment variables. And then we have to click on this environment variables button and then it's going to show a bunch of stuff we have to go to the system variables and scroll down a bit until we reach pass so and then you click on edit and we're going to show all of these ones what we want to do is click on new let's make a new environment variable so let's go to where php is located which is in my c drive in the folder named php and another php folder Go to go to this place and click to select you know, all of it. To select where you are, which is in the PHP folder. So press Control C. Move the environment variables place. The new and then Control V. So C slash PHP slash PHP. So I'm going to press Enter. Then I'll click on OK. For all of them. Now uh, after that, I'm going to open up our start menu and search for CMD and then press enter. 
is to open up this command prompt. So what we're going to do is the command prompt. So do cd then documents slash back. So, so it's going to go to the documents folder and then a backward slash. So we'll use that backward slash if we want to mean if we mean a directory inside of this a folder. So I'm just gonna enter in where I put my HTML file. So if we press enter, it's going to go to that directory. So we're going to do PHP. And then dash capital S. So that capital S means dash server. So now we have to write the name of our server. So it has to be local host. Then a call and then a number. So we're going to do local host 8000. Then press enter. And it's going to start the server. So now we're going to go to our web browser and and open up that local host 8000 server we just created it's going to show nothing because there's nothing on our index.html file i'm just going to read all this code so and then let me just put so we can just put the h1 to ensure that it show the, H, the html file so you load it it's going to show what we wanted so what to do form form will have an action of this is going to be this link so form submits dot co then a slash so so and then we have to enter in our email address we're going to enter in it so after we've done that we're going to do an input type email was a name of email and a placeholder of email address. I'm still gonna add in another input, the type of text, the name of first name and a placeholder equal to first the placeholder will be your name there's so I'm gonna put in this keyword named required so that means you have to enter it if you want to submit the form And then an input type number was ID, oh no, 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 ID, the name of phone, the placeholder of phone number. Now we have these three. We're also going to add in another input. And then we type text, then name was two. And to do con address. And then placeholder B. Contact address. We have a contact address. And then we're going to do a button, the type of submit. So uh, inside the button, we're going to say submit. 
Now it says submit. I'm also going to add in require to all of these. So now, if I put this up, it won't go to say please fill in the field because it's required. If I submit again, it's going to say please fill in this field. And so on until we finish everything. I'm going to make another input after your name. It's going to be input type hidden the name equals to underscore next. I did all that. If I enter in all of these and I press submit. It's gonna say this because our phone doesn't have the method equals the post attribute. I reload it. And then just do this. And uh, then I submit. It's gonna say this. We just have to press the not the robot button. We're gonna show that, but if I go to my Gmail, it's going to, it's going to say this. If I click on it, it's going to do all of these. I'm going to show all the things you entered and all that. So maybe if I go back to this document, so I'm going to add one more thing. So it's going to be a uh, H4. It's going to say enter your message. And then a text area. And we have the name of message. I'm not going to have any ID. And then not any of these. I'm going to add a, a placeholder, which is going to be enter message. I have that text area where we're gonna you know enter the message. And we could style it. So we're going to link a CSS file. So link CSS file, make a new file named style CSS. I'm going to style the body the background. It's going to be on your gradient, which is a mix between two colors. I'm going to do white, green, orange. And it has those. So and then, we're going to style the form. I'm to have a background of white. And it has a background, then a border radius on the PX. It's gonna have a border radius of 20 PX, also a padding of 20 PX. And then the form input and all these inputs in the form. Do display block so it's going to make them to be like that. And a margin top to try 25px. So it's going to do that. Then a padding of 10px. Also a border. Going to do 5px solid gray and also a border radius of 10px. Not do it like that. Mm. So, before this form, we're going to put a tag named center, which puts it in the center.
so you'll see that everything in the forms in the center. So then the H4. With H4, also gonna add the font size of 20 px. So then the H4. Want to add a font size of 25 px. I was gonna increase the font size. So then the text area. I'm going to do words 50. Whatever words 50 px height 50 px. Maybe this is more. Go to 150. And then the button. I'm going to add the font size of 17px. We're going to increase its font size a bit. Go for the button. I'm going to do display block. So that will be before the enter message. And then we're going to do a padding. PX a border radius of 10 px and also the same border at the inputs then the button colon hover so we're just gonna remove all of these and instead just make we make the border black If we put our mouse on the button, this border is going to be black. It's going to reduce the height of the text area from 150 to like 120 px. So if we fill in all of them, this is the end of stuff. And then the message, I'm just going to write this is a message. And I click on the submit button. We have to go on this I'm not a robot. And then if we go to our email, I'm gonna find this one. It's good it's good to say name, the contact address, email and the phone. But the reason it doesn't show the message is because we didn't add a require to the message. So yeah, we have to add that into the text area on the message. Now if I so now if I enter a message and then click on the submit button and then just click on this button. I'm gonna find this. I'm gonna say the name, contact address, email, phone, in the message. It's gonna show all of them. So also go back to our text area. Make the width to be like 230 pixels. So now it's increased the width. They're also gonna make its border to be like the button's border. Not like that. So we're also going to add in a H1. We're going to add a H1. Just kindly send us a message. Now it's added. And you can also put it inside of the form. So now it's in the form. So anyways, that's the end of today's tutorial. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. So bye.